Hello, the following will be a brief overview of the BioGrid Works website, including some of the features and functionality available to users who visit the site. To get started, you'll probably want to go to the website, so here's the URL, it's uh, orcs.thebiogrid.org. And once you go to that in your web browser, you'll be presented with a page that looks very similar to this. So this is the main homepage for BioGrid Orcs. In the top left here, we have uh, various statistics about the current build of the database. You can click here to see more complex statistics, or you can click here to download uh, pre-compiled data sets. Uh, here are other areas of the site that you might find interesting. Below is the latest news for all BioGrid properties, including our latest posts on Twitter. Um, and here you have uh, our various funding partners and collaborators. But most likely when you visit this page, you're going to be most interested in this search block in the top right corner. Here is where you can search uh, all the screens in the database and you have a variety of options. In the top right of this box, you have this first dropdown that lets you change the type of search you're going to perform. By identifier as a gene and alias type search, you can also search by publication, or you could search by any of these fields here, which are control vocabulary type screens, are control vocabulary type searches, which are based on various annotation associated with the different screens when they're curated from the literature. So if you want to do a uh, identifier type search, you can type in one or more genes. So in this case, we'll try searching for two. You can choose uh, the organism you're interested in, and you can click on search. So in this case, we found two. They have 458 associated screens and 461. And you can click on which one you're interested in to go to a gene-specific page where we have uh, more annotation about that gene and external links to other databases, as well as a comprehensive list of all the different curated screens that have had this gene as part of the screen. So in this case, there's 458 of them. And you can see the various annotation, cell type, cell line, enzyme, screen type, and you can also see whether or not this particular gene, it's DAP2, is considered a hit or not within that particular data set. You can also mouse over the notes here to see more information by our curation team specifically about this screen. And you can mouse over anything underlined in orange to get more details. Uh, this table is fully interactive, so you can do things like sort it by clicking the column headers. You can also perform a filter to, to uh, filter down the number of results you see. So in this case, let's just try searching for a type of cell type, and we find that there's only 27 that have the word melanoma in them. If we go back to the home page, uh, you can also search by publication. In this case, you can search by one or more PubMed ID, or you can just search by keywords within the publication title and abstract. So let's just do a simple search like cancer, and you'll find that there's a number of publications that had the word cancer in either the title or the abstract of the paper. So over here, you can see how many CRISPR screens were curated from each paper, and let's just click on this one, for example. If you click on it, you get more information about the paper, including link outs to PubMed, and you can download supplementary files associated with it, and you get a very similar screen to the one we had for the gene search, in which you get all of the screens that were curated from that paper. So in this particular case, uh, we have 33 entries that were curated. You can uh, click on any of the names here to go to the individual screen at any time. Um, if we go back to the home page now and we do the third type of searching, which is, includes all of these different types below, let's do uh, enzyme, for example. These ones you can select from a set of control vocabulary terms. So in this case, all of our screens use one of the following four enzymes. So let's just choose uh, Suncast 9 here and restrict it to human and do a search. 
and we find that there's only three screens in the database that currently have the enzyme SunCast9. And if we go back, it's very similar for any of the other ones. Let's do phenotype. You have different types of phenotypes to search for. Let's do toxin resistance. And we have all the ones that have the phenotype of toxin resistant here. So this lets you sort of break down our list of hundreds of screens into a more manageable set that might be more targeted to your area of interest. And from all of our searches, as I mentioned before, you can click on the name here to go and look at the information about that particular screen all by itself. So if we click on this one here, we get to uh, information about the screen, which includes details of the screen, including its cell lines, cell type. Uh, you get information about what's considered significant. So in this case, the authors have considered all the results significant. And you also get notes that the curators uh, might have had about the screen. And if we go back and we choose another one, for example, here we have different information. We have uh, different notes, different supplementary. This one has 947. And in the top right corner here, you have a distribution of the various scores. So in this case, this screen has two different score values, a rigor score and a p-value. And this is a rough distribution of the scores for the rigor score. And this is a rough distribution of the p-value scores. And down below, you'll see there's two columns, one for the rigor scores and one for the p-values. You can see which results are considered hits. And up here in significance, you can see that the authors have considered anything with a p-value less than or equal to 0.05 to be considered a significant result. And you can also get that by mousing over the values in the hit column. If uh, you want to perform these uh, filters, you can actually search and sort by anything within this table. So let's say we just wanted uh, SOX10. We can do a filter here and get SOX10. Or if we wanted to, uh, if we wanted to do more advanced searches, we could come here and we could search for anything we wanted. Like let's say we only wanted uh, rigor scores that were at least a minimum score of 100. If I submit that, we find that the results here uh, there's still 943, so we only removed about six of them by using a cutoff of 100. But you can actually go back in here and you can combine multiple different fields. So let's say I want a minimum of 100, plus I also want the uh, official symbol to be SOX with a star. And in this case, there's only one result, SOX8, and it had a rigor score well over 100. You can also go to, uh, so this is for filtering of uh, an individual screen's results. But if we go back to the browse page here, this contains all of the results. And you can also do advanced filters here. So going back to this, we could do um, very similar, like go back to our melanoma search here breaks down the results so now we're only seeing melanoma and let's say I only want uh, experimental setups that are time course. So now we only have time course melanoma screens and you can combine multiple different values and really really filter down the list to get exactly what you want. And uh, at any time on any of these pages, so let's say we go to here and we go to view this uh, individual screen again. You can also download the screen simply by clicking on the download screen button, as well as if you go back to a publication itself, you can download all the screens involved in a single publication. So let's say we want to download all three of these screens. You can click on download publication screens and here it gives you the two different options for downloading. Uh, this version will put each screen in its own separate file. And this version would actually put all the screens together into a single file uh, lined up by GNAME. So let's say we wanted them in separate files. You can click Submit. And once the file is ready to be downloaded, it will 
give you a link that lets you download that file. Sometimes you have to wait here while it uh, queues up the file for download, but usually the wait is no more than a minute or so. And in addition to all of this, you can also uh, just simply check on any number. So let's say I wanted to just download this group here. And you can click on download checked. And now you're combining multiple screens and multiple publications together into uh, a set of download files. And here we go. So this one is queued for, for being created. And eventually it'll succeed and you'll be once again given this view. So that's basically it for uh, the major operation of the site, including searches, sorting, filtering, uh, browsing through your data. Um, in addition, we have a help wiki here, which includes multiple different pages that give you information on how to use it, as well as we have a REST web service that you can go to if you want to uh, write scripts to connect and download these things automatically. Uh, we have a statistics page that you can view that gives you a breakdown of how many genes, publications, cell lines, and cell types are for each of the various organisms in each build. And of course, you can always go to downloads. And if you click on current release here, you can get our latest data files broken down by uh, organism. These files include uh, all of the screens together. Or you can uh, you can go back into the release archive and you can go and look at older releases as well. So that's basically uh, that's basically everything with uh, BioGrid Works. Um, if you uh, if you have any questions, uh, you can reach out to us by going to the about page, which gives you contact information about the team and about the work we're doing. And uh, we also intend to make more videos in the future showing more powerful things you can do with the site. Anyway, thanks for watching the video.